Hello everyone, you are welcome to my new video. It's me, Olya, here and I do sincerely congratulate you on finding a couple of extra minutes in your busy, I'm sure, schedules to learn some Ukrainian. Today we are talking about genitive case. And if you are watching this video, I assume that you have already seen my previous two videos on cases, the introductory video and the video on a nominative case, so that you will be more or less familiar with the things uh, that I'm going to be talking about in this video. So genitive case, first of all, let's figure out the questions that identify this um, case. So the questions to identify the genitive case in Ukrainian language would be Koho, or if we have to translate them directly, of whom? Чого? Of what? So, as you can tell, all of the questions for genitive case have something to do with possession. And we mostly use genitive case for when we talk about possession, about the relationship of possession between things, but not only. And we will talk more in details about usage of um, genitive case later on. First of all, let's figure out how do we form uh, the genitive case in Ukrainian language. So, as I told you, when we change the case of a noun, we might expect two kinds of two. I am showing for two kinds of changes. Whether it would be the change of um, a, of an ending, or a change within the noun itself, with a root, within a root. Oh, consonants or vowels, sometimes there, there can be alterations, some letters will get gone, so be ready for that. Today in this video I am only focusing on changing the endings, uh, depending on the gender and the number of a noun and the alterations. Let's just take them as they are and talk about the alterations later on, because this class is going to be a mess if I am going to go with it that deep. Now, the endings for genitive case and for other cases that we are going to learn sooner will depend on two major factors. First of all, on um, the gender and the number of a noun and the original ending that this noun has in nominative case, in its basic form. Now let's begin with a feminine singular word. If a feminine singular word ends in a, then in genitive case it changes to e. So school, школа, школи, desk, parta, party, Ukraine, Ukraina, Ukraini. Okay, girl, divchena, divchene. E. Uh, let's take some Ukrainian names. Um, Svetlana, Svetlany, Olha, Olhe, um, Oksana, Oksani. Let's take some foreign names, not of Ukrainian origin, like um, Rebecca, Rebeki, uh, Fatma, Fatmy, Samira, Samire. If a noun ends in ya, soft sign or miaki znak, or a consonant, in genitive, it will change to the ending E. For example, feminine pupil. Uchenitsa, Uchenitsi, uh, the capital city. Stolitsa, Stolitsi, the well. Krinitsa, Krinitsi, Matir, as you see, ends in a consonant, R. Materi, night, Nich, Nochi. You see an alteration there already, but we are talking about alterations later. We are now only interested in the change of an ending. Oven, peach, patchy, uh, salt, seal, soli. Also, change of an ending and the alteration of e and o in the root of a uh, noun. And also in Ukrainian, we have many singular feminine words that end in e ya. In that case, if we turn it to genitive, it will change to e ye. E ya, e ye. Situation, situatia, situatii. Dream, mriya, mriyi. Mriya, mriyi. Um, geografia, geography, geografia, geografii. The name Sofia, Sofii. Uh, Cynthia, 
Sinky. Now we are done with feminine, let's go to masculine singulars. So if a masculine singular word ends in a consonant, any, without any softening, without anything, just a hard consonant, uh, we will add ending a. For example, student, student, studenta, couch, divan, divana, divana, stepan, a name, Stepana, John, Johna, Steven, Stevena, Ahmed, Ahmeda, Raj, Raja. So these these last ones were foreign names, not Ukrainian. And the and let's take the word Keith, uh, masculine cat, right? Keith. If you want to make a genitive, we would also add an ending, but there would be an alteration. Keith, Kota. You see, we added an ending, but as well e. In the root changes to o kit kota alteration sorry about that we were talking about hard endings now let's go to soft endings so if a masculine singular noun ends in soft sign or miake znak or in you and you in ukrainian is a consonant that is never harsh it is always soft we add ending ya so vchetel teacher, vchetelia in genetic, olivets, pencil, olivtia, kravets, tailor, kravtia, okay, villain, lichodi, lichodia, thief, kradi, kradia, so you will see the change, y changes to ya. Now the next piece of information I'm going to give you is for more advanced students. So if you are just getting to know about um, cases in Ukrainian, this might be a little bit of extra and too complicated for you, so you can perfectly go with what I have given you for masculine singular. Ending a, ya, depending on the ending of the original noun. Now, if you are more advanced student and you want to improve your speaking, uh, so this might be a, a useful tip for you. So, in Ukrainian, um, masculine singular noun will take a little bit different endings, not a, ya, but u, you, when. When we are talking about an abstract concept, about an emotion or state of mind, about a natural phenomena, or location or institution. We take ending u when the original noun ends in a hard consonant. For example, college, college, college room, class, class, classu. Mm, let's think of a natural phenomena like rain, dosch, doschu, grad, gradu. Snow, snig, snigu, urahan, urahanu. Emotions or state of mind, for example, laughter, smig, smihu, plach, crying, plach, plachu. So that's when those four categories of nouns take the ending u. And the ending u, similarly to the ending ya, the noun in genitive case will take if originally it ends in soft sign or y. So basically when it has the soft ending. For example, burevi, bureviyu, as in heaven or paradise, raju, museum, muzei, as a location or institution, muzeju. Things are a bit easier with a neuter nouns. So if a neuter noun ends in o, we remove the o and change it to a instead. So, for example, village, selo, sela, a town or city, misto, mista, a window, vikno, vikna, apple, jabluko, jabluka, circle, kolo, kola. Now, if a neuter noun ends in e, then the ending changes to ya. Field, pole, polia in gen, face, lice, Litsa heart, serce, serce, sun, sonce, 
Солнце. Now, if we have such case as two consonants, double consonant, that is followed by ending ya, this word doesn't change at all. For example, life, життя, would be життя in nominative, життя in genitive. Knowledge, знання, знання in genitive. Uh, footwear, взуття. Now also a tip for a more advanced learners, uh, there is in Ukrainian there is a more or less numerous group of words that means animals, babies, so kitten, puppy, piglet, duckling, goosling and so on. Nouns like that in Ukrainian mostly end in ya. So we remove that ending ya and add yate. Kitten, koshenya, koshenyate, puppy, tsutsenya, tsutsenyate, piglet. Porosia, porosiate. Some of these cute baby animals' names in Ukrainian and not in ya but in a. So the system is the same. We remove this a and add ate. Like small horse, losha, loshate. A baby chicken, kurcha, kurchate. Now I wanted to, as I promised in the beginning of the video, I want to talk more in details about the usage of genitive case. When do we use genitive case? So the biggest clue for the usage of genitive um, case in Ukrainian is laying within the questions. So we were saying that the questions for genitive case are Koho, of whom, and Choho, of what. We use genitive case when we talk about belonging of something to someone or as somebody possessing someone. Uh, for example, Kniha Stepana, the book of Stepan. Book of whom? Stepan. Kniha Koho, Stepana, the window of school, Vikno, Scholi, of what? Of school, Scholi, the female uh, student of college, Studentka, Collegeu, the female student of what? Of college. Also, we use nouns in genitive case in some negative sentence, but not as a subject, but, but as an object. So, if there is a negative sentence in some negative sentences when we have objects they can go in genitive case uh, for example uh, let's take a negative sentence like there is no rain today there is no why there is absence of what of a rain there is no salt in the kitchen na kuchni nemaye soli so we have absence of what of uh, salt. U Svitlane nemaje brata. Koho, čoho, nemaje koho, brata, nemaje... So we have absence of whom, of brother. So that is all from me for you for today about genitive case. I hope that this video will not take ages and it won't be boring. I just really felt um, the need to go through more or less every possible situation that you can deal with when uh, whenever making genitive uh, case. Anyway, I think that it's better when this information does exist. So if you don't need it, you can always skip it. But those who need it uh, can have some use from it and improve their uh, Ukrainian language greatly. I hope. I hope this video was useful. I hope you enjoyed studying with me. If you have any questions, traditionally do not hesitate and write down your questions in the comment section down below. And I will see you in my next video. Have a nice day. Enjoy your studying and bye.